Good morning. Have you ever heard anyone say that actions speak louder than words? It's another proverb or a traditional saying that's been passed along orally from generation to generation. These sayings are usually um, expressing general truths based on experience and observations of everyday life. Some proverbs do have literal meanings, that is, they mean exactly what they say. But many proverbs have a richer meaning beyond the literal level. So, listen to this. This is an excerpt from the read aloud yesterday. I'm much smarter than he is, joked Jack. Well, laughed Samuel, actions speak louder than words. Have you ever heard anyone say that? So, what are actions? Excuse me. Actions are verbs. Okay. You have um, all sorts of verbs. Think of five verbs right now. <laughs> Can any of those verbs that you just listed actually speak? So what is the name of the literary device that describes when an animal or a non-living thing acts like a human? That's personification. Well, actions do not really speak, but the things that we do can make more of a statement than the things that we say. For example, it can be easy to say that you are someone's friend, but to actually show this with your actions, perhaps by being loyal, makes a much bigger impact. Instead of saying, actions speak louder than words, Samuel could have said, Jack, you may say you're smarter than I am, but your actions, such as reeling Af Alfie in with that fishing pole without realizing it, show that you are not smarter than I am. So actions speak louder than words. See if you can come up with a time, an instance throughout the day that that might be an appropriate phrase to use. Today we're going to talk specifically about one gentleman who lived a long time ago. Um, his name is Alexander Graham Bell. Um, he's an inventor and he invented some things um, very curious person and he invented some things that were used and then changed pretty quickly into more and more complicated inventions just like most inventors they have a base of something else that they have learned from someone else and they improve upon that and make a new invention or a better invention so the word deaf is vocabulary that you will need, partially or completely lacking the sense of hearing. Invention is a machine, tool, or other device that someone has made, designed, or thought of for the very first time. Inventive is a person who would be skilled at creating something new. Mechanics, uh, the study of force and motion and how they work in the world. Receiver. The part of a telephone located in the earpiece that converts electrical signals into sound. Telegraph is a device that allows a person to send a message over a wire by tapping out coded letters and words. Transmitter, the part of a telephone that converts sound waves from the human voice into electrical impulses and sends or transmits them. So what part of your body helps you produce your voice? Your diaphragm vocal cords, trachea or windpipe, and larynx or voice box. And why do voices have variations? Well, part of it has to do with the size of the larynxes. Larger larynx produce lower sounds. Also with the tension of the surrounding muscles affect the pitch of your voice. How do people communicate who cannot hear well or speak? They can use sign language, they can read lips, they can write, and there's a lot of technology. So before we begin our next reading, I'm interested to know 
if you know what it means, if you can remember what it means to invent something. Well, an invention is a machine, tool, or other device that someone has made, designed, or thought of for the very first time. Think back to ancient Rome. Do you remember? They invented many new things. Warfare machines, arches, domes, such as the Pantheon, concrete, bridges such as the Pont de Garde, aqueducts, books with pages and columns, uh, the Colosseum and circuses entertainment there, water wheels, calendars, roads, sewers, public baths, indoor heating. All of those inventions are often built upon earlier inventions as technology becomes better. Remember, the ancient Romans improved upon earlier inventions of concrete by adding more ingredients that made it last longer. Well, the famous inventor that we're going to be speaking about today is Alexander Graham Bell. And he was born quite a long time ago in Scotland. And he was very interested in something called the telegraph. You learned about the telegraph last year in when you learned about Western expansion and the U.S. Civil War. Remember, the telegraph is a device that was invented many years ago by Samuel Morse. It allows a person to send messages over a wire by tapping out coded letters and words using Morse code. Samuel Morse made Morse code. It's still used today in emergency situations where communication is difficult. But the invention of the telegraph greatly interested Alexander Graham Bell. The telegraph's ability to send a signal over a wire caused Bell to wonder if he could send sounds over a wire. So let's learn a little bit about what Alexander Graham Bell invented. About three weeks after the children's school concert, the first snowfall occurred. Several inches of glistening snow lay like soft blanket upon the ground. It was a perfect start to the holiday season. It was also the first day of winter, and Samuel was busy preparing for his annual open house event. This was Samuel's way of welcoming in the forthcoming holidays. He always invited his family, friends, and neighbors to a wonderful evening of festivities. Both he and Jack liked to cook, and Amy and Ethan enjoyed helping them. Jack also entertained the guest by playing the piano. The children had arrived bright and early, eager to help out in the kitchen. Jack was already there when they appeared. He was sitting at the kitchen table, drinking his morning coffee and eating buttered toast. Alfie was sitting next to him, hoping to receive a tasty treat. Granddad, can we make cupcakes? asked Amy. Before Samuel could reply, the telephone rang. That's the fourth time this morning, exclaimed Samuel. I sometimes wish Alexander hadn't invented something, or had invented something other than the telephone. Who's Alexander? asked Ethan. Is he a friend of yours? <laughs> Jack laughed out loud. We're old, but we're not that old, he announced. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876, during the late 19th century. I knew that, said Amy proudly. In fact, I know a lot about Alexander Graham Bell because my reading group just wrote a report about him and read it to the class. So, can we make cupcakes? Sure you can. And when you're done, I would, um, done with that, I would like you guys to help make a batch of cookies, announced Samuel. I really like the chocolate chip cookies you made last year, said Jack. Amy and Ethan got to work. They placed flour, baking powder, butter, eggs, oil, sugar, and chocolate and vanilla frosting on the countertop and began to prepare, prepare the batter. Alexander Graham Bell was Scottish, continued Amy. Both his father and his grandfather were speech experts and worked with the deaf. His mother taught piano, but she began losing her hearing. We learned from our research that from a very early age, the science of sound was an important topic of conversation in Alexander's home. Alexander Graham Bell's father invented a sound alphabet called visible speech. This alphabet was used by deaf people. 
it's different for some, oh, it's difficult for some deaf people to learn how to speak because they cannot hear the spoken words. Visible speech is a series of pictures to show combinations of sound from the alphabet. The pictures were designed to show the person how to shape the mouth to make certain sounds. Babies learn language by imitating others, chimed in Ethan. But humans are kind of unique because they can make all kinds of sounds, like laughter. Sounds come out through the mouth because we breathe in air and the air travels through the larynx in the throat. The air makes the vocal cords vibrate, which creates sound. Then certain parts of the mouth and throat help to shape the sounds into words. I had to take a test on this last semester, said a confident Ethan. Well, what a pair of smarty pants you both are, yelled Jax. Jack, and then he chortled to himself. Amy, are you done teaching us about Alexander? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not, said Amy, who was not entirely sure that she liked being interrupted by her brother. Because of his father's work, Alexander decided that when he grew up, he wanted to work with deaf people too. Alexander used his father's visible speech to help deaf children learn to speak more clearly. He also discovered that when Alexander was a boy, he and his brothers were very inventive and created many interesting things. When Alexander Graham Bell was older, he continued to study science and in particular sound. So he was kind of like a scientist too. You are quite the expert, said Jack enthusiastically. Did you also learn in your research that Mr. Bell was not only a scientist, but also a musician? When he was a young man, he played and taught the piano. Later in his work life, he combined these interests. He spent time studying the mechanics of the piano and tuning forks. He was particularly interested in how vibrations make sound. Yes, said Amy, who was now holding a large mixing bowl while Ethan used a small handheld electric whisk to create light and fluffy batter. At the sound of the electric whisk, Alfie began to bark loudly and the children laughed, but Samuel told Alfie to pipe down. However, continued Amy over the suppressed barking sounds that Alfie was now making. We also found out that Alexander Graham Bell began his career in London, working at a school for deaf children. He had private students too, whom he taught in his home, which is how he wet, met his wife, Mabel Hubbard. She was deaf, but had learned how to speak. Mr. Bell helped her to speak more clearly. I hope your group got an A on that report, said Samuel, who had been busy preparing his specialty, chicken parmesan. Hey, Jack, as soon as I'm finished here, you can get started on that beef stroganoff you've been threatening to cook for us. My beef stroganoff is famous, replied Jack indignantly. You should be honored that I have agreed to make it. At that moment, the telephone rang again and Samuel shuffled off to answer it. As Amy and Ethan dropped tablespoonfuls of cupcake batter into the baking cups, Jack proclaimed, Well, before you get an A from me, did your report explain on a device how a device that we know very well today, the telephone, came to be invented all those years ago? As a matter of fact, yes, replied Amy as she carefully placed the tray of cupcakes inside the oven. That was the main part of our report. In the 1830s, a man named Samuel Morse invented the telegraph. It used different combinations of dots and dashes to tap out messages. His system is called Morse code. Telegraph, telephone, television, telecommunicate. Why do all these words begin with tele? Asked Ethan curiously. Good question, yelled Jack while Samuel hovered around him, hoping that he would not cause too much of a mess in his kitchen. Tela means far or from far away. So that's the root meaning of the first part of all these words, 
Phone means sound. Graph means writing, explained Jack. So telephone means far away sound, and telegraph means far away writing, said Ethan enthusiastically. Vision means something that you can see. So television means far away image, continued Amy. You hit the nail on the head, pronounced Samuel. The telegraph made it possible for written forms of communication to travel on wires across great distances, continued Amy. The only problem was that only one message could be transmitted at one time. Alexander Graham Bell believed that it was possible to invent a kind of telegraph that could transmit many messages at the same time along the same wire. His Wife's father, Mr. Hubbard, believed in him and helped to finance his experiments. Did you also learn about Mr. Watson? Inquire, inquired Jack. You just heard to hit the nail on the head. That's another phrase. That means to do something just exactly right. It takes accuracy to hit a nail on the head right in the center. We learned that Thomas Watson built the models of Mr. Bell's inventive ideas. Together, they figured out how to solve problems and improve the designs. Eventually, Alexander believed that instead of a telegraph, it might be possible to build a talking machine. He had studied how air changes as sound waves or vibrations move through it. This led him to wonder whether sound waves could change an electric current. If so, spoken words could be sent over a wire. Mr. Bell knew that he was getting closer and closer. He stopped teaching so he could devote more of his time to his invention. Then, on March the 10th, 1876, during one of their experiments with a transmitter and a receiver, Mr. Bell and Mr. Watson made their first breakthrough when sound was transmitted and received. A transmitter is the part of the telephone that converts sound waves from a human voice into electrical signals and transmits or sends them to another telephone. The receiver receives those same electrical signals and turns them into sound. So finally, after improving the design of their talking machine, the telephone was invented when on March the 10th, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell spoke to Mr. Watson on their talking machine. Well, at that very moment, the telephone rang. Well, that's either Alexander Graham Bell or Mr. Watson, said Jack loudly. All four laughed out loud as Samuel shuffled off to answer the telephone one more time. Samuel shook his head and smiled as he made his way back to his grandchildren and his old and dear friend Jack. The invention of the telephone more than 100 years ago has forever changed the way we communicate with others, exclaimed Samuel. I, for one, am grateful to Mr. Bell's invention inventive nature, and his understanding of the mechanics of sound. As the day progressed, Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Ethan baked and cooked up a feast. They continued to talk and laugh and enjoy each other's company. Samuel's home was soon filled with wonderful aromas. As the afternoon turned into evening and the sun began to set, family members, friends, and neighbors began to appear. They arrived with smiling faces, eager to spend time with each other and to celebrate the coming holidays. The children moved through the crowd, offering the guests various home-cooked foods. Samuel had made a wonderful log fire that burned brightly. The light from the fire cast a warm golden glow. Amy sank into a comfortable chair by the fire. Her mind was filled with thoughts of Samuel Morse and his telegraph and how his invention inspired Alexander Graham Bell to invent the telephone. She thought about the future and began to imagine the possibilities. Amy smiled drowsily and wondered if maybe one day she would work on an invention that would change people's lives. 
As the evening wore on, Jack played a number of beautiful melodies on the piano, and afterward the two good friends sat together by the fire and gave thanks for the blessings of another year spent with family and friends. So what is a telephone? Well, it's some type of instrument for sending the sound of the human voice over a long distance. What invention did Alexander want to improve on? The telegraph. And what is a telegraph? It's a device that allows a person to send messages over a wire by tapping out coded letters and words. Can you compare and contrast a telephone and a telegraph? How are they similar? They both allow for long distance communication. How are they different? The telephone transmits and receives voice sounds. The telegraph transmits and receives signals. What does the word transmitter mean as it relates to a telephone? It's the part of the telephone that converts sound waves from the human voice into electrical signals and sends them to another telephone. So what does the word receiver mean as it relates to a telephone? The receiver is the part of the telephone that's in the earpiece and it receives electrical signals and converts them into sound. In general, what's an invention? An invention is a machine, a tool, a device that is made, designs, or thought of for the very first time. Often, an invention builds upon an earlier invention. When was the telephone invented? Well, variations may include the 19th century during the late 1800s or a little more than 100 years ago. And how did that invention of the telephone change the world? Have telephones stayed the same over 100 years? No. And you know that people continue to purchase new phones. Some people buy a new phone as soon as one comes out. They might get a new phone every six months or every year. They continue to change and inventions um, are improved upon. What does it mean if a person is deaf? Well, a deaf person is partially or completely lacking a sense of hearing. You heard that Alexander's mother was deaf and that his father and grandfather were speech teachers. How do you think those circumstances might have affected Alexander's later life, especially the work that he chose to do? Well, because of his mother's deafness and his father and grandfather's work, he wanted to work with deaf children. He became interested in the science of sound, and he wanted to invent machines that would help people. I hope that you will listen carefully with your ears, protect your hearing, okay, it's very precious, and um, go and have a great day.